Well, hey there, this is Shane with Shane's Books and Review, and I hope you are having a great day today. We have made it till Friday. I thought this week was never going to end. But today's book is going to be The House with the Clock in the Walls, wrote by John Bellars. I mentioned on Monday that there was some subtle differences, and there are. That doesn't mean that they're bad differences. For instance, in the movie at the end, that scene's completely different. But moreover, for me, the book... In the movie, I'm going to think of them as two separate entities. It's not going to be so much that one is better than the other. They both have their own footings. The book has a lot better character development and more detail about characters. Of course, it's a book. It can. Some of the feelings that really aren't portrayed very well on screen. Now, on the other hand, I found the story that was portrayed by the movie a lot more enjoyable than the book's story. And it's not so much that they were that far apart that they're two different things, but in some instances, they are. There's this whole deal with Tarby, and some of that's explored more so. There's also the huge differences between who gets brought back to life and who doesn't. Also, I found that the story about the lady was so much better in the movie than it was in the book. I, it, there was an emotional connection there, whereas in the book it was more of, eh, so with those subtle differences out of the way, what do you guys and gals think? I mean, I'm sure that going to be people that hate the movie and people that hate the book or people that like the book and people that, you know, back and forth, back and forth, all that, all the different combinations. But I'm curious to know what you think. Myself, I kind of value both of them about the same because in the book, I got all the details about the characters, more so than what I did in the movie. But in the movie, I felt like I had a richer experience with the story, not so much with the characters. As the book opens, we find Lewis. Lewis is now a orphan in a lot of ways. His parents died in an automobile accident, unfortunately, and that's where the story starts off with him moving to live in his uncle's house. That was a nice little thing because instead of it being he walked into a magical place, moreover, he walked into a place that was kind of normal, but as time goes on, he finds out more and more magical things. Now, imagine my letdown whenever I found out that the chair was not really in that story. The chair in the movie was fairly awesome. I enjoyed that. Now, Lewis, he's got his own little plights of discovering who he is and coming into his own. And that has to do with the recent death of his parents and the relationship with a new kid by the name of Tarby and their interactions throughout the book. Lewis just wants to be liked. Well, that's the same with anybody, really. But it's so important to him. And he finds this kid, they seem to be getting along, but the kid is just more and more and more of a rear end throughout the book. There's one particular scene in the book versus the movie where his uncle used the moon magic to put the moon into the water and picked up the reflection through it across the yard. It was more, I got more out of it in the book than I did in the movie. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. The movie, it had these beautiful beautiful graphics that people I know worked so hard on to do and pull off and they did a really good job with it too. In the book on the other hand there was a little bit of discussion afterwards and Tarby was actually invited to that and Tarby is really a scaredy cat. He doesn't much care for Halloween. He gets spooked real easy. But for whatever reason, Lewis latches on to him and wants to get that kid's approval. And so he starts inviting him over to Jonathan's house and they do different things that are magical, but it doesn't pan out. Tarby continuously gets more and more hateful to the point of physical aggression towards Lewis and eventually that relationship has to go. In the meantime, the motivation, the reason why I'm going on about Tarby is the motivational point in the movie was Tarby wanted to see something huge, but Lewis was the one that was going to show him. Well, in the book, it was the other way around. It was that Lewis was trying to get Tarby's approval, but he was getting Jonathan to show him magic things. And I found that the book was a little bit more true to, I think, what a young kid's, if it was an actual thing, if a young kid could be a warlock <laughs> and he could do magic, that want of wanting his parents back. And that whole scene at the... Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was well done book. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And the reason why I enjoyed it was kind of, I think, the same reason why I enjoyed Ender's Game so very much. That lets you see where he was, what he was thinking, and what he was wanting to accomplish, which was just simply to be liked. Now, in the end, he ends up saving the world. And not only does he save the world, he also gets the girl, which was pretty cool. And overall, I enjoyed the storytelling of the book. They had enough changes and enough things to make it interesting that I didn't feel like it was dragging on into forever. And I'm actually kind of surprised that I had never read the book up till now. Hmm. So here's my question to 
new guys and girls. Have you ever read The House with the Clock in the Wall? I have found that that is actually a, the first book in a series. I think it's like 12 books or something. So I might check some more of them out. Don't know if I'll make reviews on them or not, but I wanted to share it because if you have a youngster that likes mystical or magical type environments and whatever, and you want a book that's kind of got a little bit of an adult theme, but not actual adult things in it, uh, then this might actually fill that little void. If you have read it, let me know what you think down there. Again, today's book was The House with the Clock in the Walls, wrote by John Bellars. Like, share, subscribe. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and I will see you on Monday. Have a good weekend.